and a series of five was held on Thursday at Wimbledon. Uh, England had such an award, unrewarding season last year, obviously anxious to re-establish themselves at the top of the sport. Let's start by looking at the two squads. England led by Dave Jessup and including Kenny Carter, Alan Graham, replacing Michael Lee, who returned from Czechoslovakia with food poisoning, Gordon Kennett, Chris Morton, Malcolm Simmons, and the two reserves were John Davis and Andy Graham. And the world champion Bruce Pennell from California captaining the USA with Scott Autry, the Moran brothers Kelly and Sean, Bobby Schwartz replacing Steve Gresham who was injured, Dennis Segalos and reserves John Cook and Brad Oxley. Well, it's an 18 heat meeting. Our commentator is Dave Ladding and he brings us right up to date with the score as we join it now for heat three. Well, just two heats gone. You can see England two in front and you can see the rain really coming down steadily which is not good news for Speedway. Heat three with John Davis in the red colour helmet on the inside coming in for Michael Lee, former world champion eight. Again, rather controversially and sensationally with a stomach bug contracted in Czechoslovakia. So Davis, named at reserve, comes into heat three. Next to him in yellow and black, the younger of the two Moran brothers from America. This is Sean Moran, age 20. He's in grid two. In grid three, we have Chris Morton in blue for the Lions. And on the outside, it's Kelly Moran. 21 year old from Eastbourne and America. So here we go for Heat 3 with the Ameri with the Lions rather 7-5 up. And the rain still coming down fairly steadily. It's going to be very greasy out there. And maybe just a light dangerous as they hit this first corner. Here we go for Heat 3. And it looks like Davis has got a clean break from the inside. And uh, inside very, very hard indeed goes Sean Moran. Morton got a knock there. And so too did Brother Kelly. And uh, while sitting there wondering what has hit him, that's Chris Morton. In fact, uh, trying to sort them all out in the dirt is very difficult, but it certainly looked like Morton was the first to go, and then Kelly Moran. Let's have a look at it again. Well, you can see Davis gets away clear on the inside and Kelly Moran on the outside in white. But just watch for Sean Moran. He really uh, wraps a handful of throttle, gives Morton a knock. Down goes Chris Morton and brother Kelly goes roaring out of our picture. We look for Chris Morton. His bike goes through the fence before him. Don't think there's much harm done, but that was an exciting start to heat number three. Now well, some fairly frantic activity in the England camp there to try and get uh, Chris Morton mobile in time for the restart of heat number three. for the second time of asking no exclusions the referee Graham Brody had judged the first Ben Fracker to be down to first Ben Bunching so John Davis on the inside Sean Moran who really uh, ought to be held up as the guilty party he was one that put himself around going into the first corner last time Chris Moore well a bit muddy but uh, unbound he's in grid three and Kelly Moran who also uh, took a tumble on the first turn he's on the outside so here we go again heat number three Davis, the Moran brothers, and uh, Chris Morton out there in grid three. And again, it looked like Davis got clear. And again, it's uh, Kelly Moran around the outside, and Sean Moran as Morton gets sandwiched there. Between the two Morans, Davis is clear. Sean Moran is second, Kelly Moran is third, and now uh, Sean Moran is a real little tiger. Really goes hurtling under John Davis. And brother Kelly is back in third place, and I'm sure he'll have a double as well. A daredevil spectacular couple, these two. Here is Sean Moran. There's the distance as Davis is in second place. Kelly Moran, all kinds of trouble. Doesn't like the wet too well, uh, Kelly Moran. So this is Sean Moran. Seven appearances thus far for the United States of America. It's into his last lap. 1982 average last year for Sheffield was 8.97. He's having a good year this year. Really has been the right spots in the season at Sheffield. He's going to win uh, Heat 3 in a counter. Over the line here goes John Davis, is second. Kelly Moran is third. So a 4 2 for the Americans. Keeps it close.
Well, Chris, let's show you straight away what happened in the original run. Can you take us through this? Yeah, I, I saw that John had made the start, and as you see, I'm just in front of Sean Moran here, so I thought I'll cut across to stop him getting the inside and see him coming across there. And um, we were fairly close coming into the corner, and Sean just kept coming, and he caught, caught the front wheel and it just brought me off and just kept sliding. Do you think he should have been excluded for that? Um, on the track, I thought he should have been, but looking at it now on, on the, the, the rear run, like, um, not so sure, you know, we, we were probably about even going into the corner, and all four into the rear run was probably fair enough. Three races gone, the points uh, absolutely locked together, England 9, America line, and we were reminded that uh, the last time we had an England-America test here, that was back in 1980, that ended in a draw, reckoned to be one of the greatest speedway international fixtures of all time. Fancy it's going to be close and tight and tense in here this evening as this first test of the 1982 series unfolds. There is Pennell, of course, the world champion who has started this season, I might controversially, with uh, one or two uh, little hassles about contracts and appearance money. He's okay here. His appearance always an inspiration for the Americans. In heat four, he's got Martin Simmons in grid two. And Dave Jessup on the outside, so it's Sigalos, Simmons, Pennell, Jessup from the inside out. Here is heat number four. And it looks like Jessup from the outside and the two Americans, and the Americans might try to squeeze just about around the first corner. They do. It is Pennell clear. It is Sigalos in second place and Simmons in third place. And Dave Jessup, the England skipper, went wide and took a real face full of dirt and is totally out of contention. And the Americans looking pretty good at this stage. Pedal in front, Sigalos is second. You can see the distances. Simmons trying hard to get back on terms, but it is so awfully difficult to come from behind when conditions are this uh, wet and puddly. You get filled in, although uh, Martin Simmons having a good year with Wimbledon. Sure won't give up trying. Pedal. Master of individual racing and indeed of team racing, looking back over his shoulder. Simmons comes in to vision on the last lap. Can he find some special effort? Can he find something uh, a little extra during the last two quarters? It's had to come pretty quickly now, and it's going to. Over the line goes panel. Second was Sigalos. Third was Markham Simmons. And uh, an impressive piece of team speedway from the Americans. And that takes them in front here after four races. Panel won it, but it was all about uh, Team Speedway. The Americans uh, looking very comfortable indeed in Heat 4. England 10, America 14, so the visitors go four up after four heats. And with the Statesiders uh, getting their noses in front early on here in this first test of the 1982 series. The England management duo of John Berry and Eric Bucock wasting no time to try and stem the flow. The inner reserve is John Davis. Well, he originally was listed at first reserve, coming in for the uh, unfit Michael Lee. John, uh, second place, first time out. And a very experienced international performer. Next to him will be Schwartz here. Uh, grid three has Andy Graham, the second reserve in the England squad. Andy, this is his first appearance is Andy's first appearance for England in this country as a successful member of the British Lions touring team. He'll be in blue and on the outside there Scott Autry in the white helmet colour for the Americans. So as the rain comes down we move to this uh, remarkable view, unique view indeed of Speedway from our high camera way up on the third and fourth corners. We'll watch the start from this angle. So looking at it from left to right, Davis then Schwartz, then Andy Graham, and on the outside, Autry, as heat five, comes under starter's orders. And away they go. And it looks as though Davis again has made the jump. Davis and Graham coming around the outside. And oh, my word, this is uh, some start to his career in this country for Andy Graham. He uh, really made a pitch of start. There he is looking over his shoulder, looking very comfortable as Davis comes under pressure from Schwartz for second place, there is Graham. The battle really is all about second place here. But Graham really is winning this one, looking back for partner John Davis, remember, 
Americans are four up, so if Hickman can stay in first and second here, we'll level the scores. This young man, Andy Graham, 24 years, seven months old, and a marvelous season with Birmingham up there in the Midlands, and uh, fully justifying his first cap in this country, and indeed a very early introduction to the action here in hit five. So an unexpected uh, pairing. Graham and Davis take maximum points in heat five. The Wimbledon crowd here are enjoying that. Third place for Schwartz. But that was a debut to remember for Andy Graham. Where in the first corner he was in front and never really looked in any trouble. One third of the way through this first test match and still the point scores level. England 18, America 18. And Heat 7, we have a slice of Speedway history. This sport, of course, has a great tradition of uh, family connections and racing brethren. And for the first time in an international in this country, certainly against the Americans anyway, we have got the Graham brothers from the Midlands in partnership, both coming in uh, as late replacements. Alan Graham will be in red. He'll be in grid three. Who There is his younger brother, Andy Graham, who we saw making... Uh, a fair old start to his test career over here with a race win in his first ride. He'll be on the inside, and they're in against the crack American pairing, Dennis Sigalos. He's in grid two in yellow and black. And then we have Alan Graham, who was only notified uh, at three o'clock this afternoon. He's had a rare old dash down the motorway to be here on time. He's in grid three, and Bruce Pennell on the outside. The American uh, world individual champion, of course, has been such a standard bearer and a glamorous image for the sport. He's on the outside here. Heat seven, it's 18 apiece. Could still go either way. The England team management pairing of uh, John Berry and Eric Bucock playing their reserves with Gay Abandon. Here we go, heat seven. And again, it looks like Andy Graham has gone away. Andy Graham gets clear. Cigars in second. There is Pebble coming, roaring around the outside. Made some ground up there. Got a good line. But it's Andy Graham. And what a hero this lad is turning out to be. He's in front. Pebbles in second place. Cigalos is third. Alan Graham is at the back. But it looks like uh, England have found a very unexpected trump card. And uh, Andy Graham, my word, uh, he is stretching them. And that's the world champion behind him, remember? And brother Alan is getting up. There is uh, Andy Graham. And we look back for the battle for second place because his brother Alan hasn't uh, stopped trying yet. Still Andy Graham in front. And they have begun to stretch out a little bit in the minor placings. But there's no uh, doubt about the leader of heat number seven to the last lap, Andy Graham, formerly with Milton Keynes. His first test match over here, it's his second win. Second was panel, third was Sigalos. Americans tucking into the minor placings to share the heat. But uh, Alan, rather Andy Graham here, again the winner from pillar to post. And uh, he is being a little short of sensational here so far this evening. Andy, what about that for a start in a test match? Yeah, it's a great start, Gary, really. Two wins, uh, my first test match in England. I'm very pleased, yes. What about this start? Because you've been starting so well, and here you leave the world champion standing. Yes, well, obviously, uh, on the conditions of the track this evening, Gaten is um, essential, really, to get out the gate and try you know that the shale from your rear wheel just fills you the riders in and unfortunately one of them riders it was my brother but um you know you've got to make the gate and under, under these conditions you've just got to uh, go for it for yourself and john barry, barry said to me he said if you do make the gate and he says don't look for round for allen he says just get on with it so that's what i did were you looking around for the world champion at all um no uh, you don't have to look around for bruce you can hear him coming usually <laughs> And Graham talking there to Gary Newborn, really enjoying his evening. And after seven heats, it was all level. England 21, the United States 21. After three more heats, England gained a four-point lead. And as we come now with heat 11, it's England 32, the United States 28. Dave Lanning now has the lineup. On the inside there is Malcolm Simmons in blue. There's Malcolm Simmons in blue. Grid two has an American reserve and the big favourite here it's a player named Wimbledon that's Brad Oxley son of American promoter Harry Oxley making uh, his bow in this evening's proceedings grid three coming in for the England skipper Dave Jessup and that's a surprise DJ with only two points is dropped quite unceremoniously and John Davis comes into the red helmet colour and on the outside it is Bobby Schwartz 
So very quickly again on the inside, Simmons next to him, Oxley. Interesting to see if he can get straight into the thick of things. Grid three has Davis on the outside. It is Schwartz to score 32-28. Here's Heat, number 11. And it looks like England in front. Simmons leads it. Davis is in second place, bursting through. Comes Schwartz, and he almost squeezed through a gap there, not much bigger than... Uh, away for a flat, he gets squeezed out now again Schwartz must try to move Davis over, I think he's going to very very tight for second place in front of his Simmons and Schwartz is just about squeezed in front or has he no, Davis held to that again it's a rear battle for second place but it's still Simmons in front, Davis having uh, withstood the forceful thrust of Schwartz for a torrid lap it's now stretching clear. And again, this could be a crucial one for England. Remember, they're four up. And now, with just one lap to go, it's Martin Simmons and Davis. There's Davis, there's Schwartz in third place. And uh, Simo, well, former England skipper, coming back into the side after a long while. He's going to win the number 11 over the line. In he goes. Davis holds on for second. Third place is Schwartz with a maximum heat win. Anchored by Markham Simmons, has now put England in command of this first test. Bruce, what is happening to the Americans tonight? Well, as you can see, I'm a little bit of a mess, but uh, we're all hanging in there. We've had a few uh, engine failures, but, uh, you know, I mean, we're just getting flat beat. That's all, that's all there is to it. They came prepared a little better than we did. We're out there giving 110 percent, but it's just not good enough tonight. Are you going to start running out of time soon as the heats tick by? Yeah, we sure are. You know, we're not going to give up until the very last heat's over with. But, uh, you know, we're all concerned in the pits here. There's not much we really can do. You know, as much as we tell them to keep on going and try harder, they're doing the best they can. But, like I said, it's just not good enough, you know. What's happening to the world champion tonight? He's not having a very good night either. Well, I don't know what the heck it is. You know, I'm just getting beat. That's all there is to it. I'm a mess and I'm missing the start, but uh, I'm still in there trying as much as I can. 11 races completed in England, further in front than at any other stage of this evening's proceedings. 37-29 the score. So here is Alan Graham, and he'll be going into grid number two. As we look across the lineup, it's going to be Sean Moran on the inside in the yellow and black helmet colour. So difficult to discern their helmet colours with all the muck and shell hanging on and uh, adhering to them recognized Moran by those old-fashioned almost straight-up handlebars next to him of Alan Graham grid three is Kelly Moran and on the outside Chris Morton America eight behind their revival if it is to come should really start here and heat number 12 and up to the corner that was a flying start for Alan Graham Alan Graham beats it the Moran boys are after him but it is Alan Graham who got away on his back wheel it's just something up as they come past our competition position second place is Sean Moran and Chris Morton has moved up and through on the inside has gone Sean Moran and he really is a daredevil this lad moves inside and Graham Graham still trying to find some driver around the outside a little bit more like it this way Sean Moran on the inside Graham battling back around the outside this is brave bold speedway and Alan Graham, despite the conditions, has held out Sean Moran as we go into the last lap. Still Graham in front. Sean Moran is second. Third is Chris Morton. And it has been Moran who has supplied the thrills, but Graham here who has supplied the courage. Going around the last two corners and just hanging on by two lengths. It is Graham. Second was Moran. Third place was Morton. That really, without any question, was the best race of this first test. And almost a tragedy at the end as Graham stopped it and his partner Morton almost ran into him a beam. Well, we can see the effort made by Sean Moran. He is in yellow and black, uh, withstanding a challenge from Chris Morton as they go down the back straight. And uh, Moran does pretty well to hold out Morton here. And you can see Alan Graham in front. Sean Moran is second as they duck and dive and weave about and again coming over the line we move back to normal speed Sean Moran makes his bid up the inside and seems to have the drop on Graham here and indeed gives him a little bit of a nudge -o. but Alan Graham is having none of it there you can see Moran clearly a length in front but a really enterprising piece of cornering there from Graham gets around out where the dirt is gets a better line gets his wheels back in line the quicker and as they hit the pit corner 
you can see he just has got enough power, he's just has got enough uh, horsepower there to get round the outside, levelling off, and uh, enough to take three points on a most impressive and resourceful win. 8-14 on the inside, Bobby Swartz, three points from four starts for America. Next to him, Alan Graham, the reserve, who's come in and scored a win and a last place in his two outings. Grid three has the other American reserve, John Cook, whose bike uh, just fizzled out at the start of his first ride. And on the outside, it is Chris Morton and the blue helmet for England. Heat 14. And again, it is Graham who gets away. Swartz is second, Morton is third. Although Cook will try to find the inside line. Here comes Chris Morton around the outside, sweeping around the boards the way he loves to do. So it's England giving him the old one-two at the moment with Graham in front, Morton second, Schwartz is third, and John Cook uh, again grabbing great fistfuls of throttle to try and find uh, a way around his own partner. And while the Americans seem to uh, be prepared to give it an awful lot of welly, they're not getting very far compared to the more perhaps conservative style of the Englishmen who have gated quickly and once in front have looked awfully comfortable. This is Graham. Oh, having said that, uh, he almost uh, overshot the corner into the last lap, but don't think he'll do that again. Graham in front, Morton is second. It's going to be a maximum for the Lions, who really have uh, improved and looked more resourceful as the evening has unfolded. A win for Graham. Second was Morton. Third was Bobby Schwartz. And that means 5-1 Heat win for England, and stretch their lead even further now after 14 races. And England now 49, 35 points in front and nearing overall victory. So Andy Graham on the inside, he's in blue, reserve replacement for Gordon Kennett. Two wins and a last. Next to him in white, it is Kelly Moran, grid three is uh, the mercurial Kenny Carter in red. On the outside, Sean Moran, in yellow and black, 49, 35. A handsome uh, heat advantage here could uh, wrap up this first test match for the Lions. Here we go for heat number 15. And it is Graham from the inside and Carter from the outside as Sean Moran tries to burst through. But it's the English Lions in front and it's looking good for the home nation in this first test match. Carter. Moving outside, his partner Andy Graham, Sean Moran, will try to find something extra, I'm sure, to get up and challenge. But, uh, well, there's Carter in front. He really has looked to rather in a class of his own here this evening. In complete command, it's looking so authoritative and so comfortable for a rider of comparatively limited experience. There's Carter. Graham, too, has been a rare match winner. Although, you'll have to watch out for Moran. There's Carter, and Moran, Sean Moran, has slid through, or has he? It's very, very tight for second place. Once again, Sean Moran bursting through on the inside. There's Carter in front. The battle really is for second place. And uh, Sean Moran has... Oh! Well, on the line there, it was difficult to separate the two of them in second place. In fact, just getting up there... It was Andy Graham on the line. Carter won it. Andy Graham just held on by our reckoning by about a tyre width. But a maximum heat there for England will be enough to make sure they win this first test match. And they did finish it with a little bit of a flourish. So, heats and with three still to go, an unassailable lead for England. 54 points to 36 to clinch the first of this five test series. Gary Newborn took the opportunity of congratulating the English skipper Dave Jessup. Thank you very much. Yes, we, we have uh, sneaked the test in one of the four races to go. Unfortunately, not with a lot of my help, but uh, I've done a little bit of work behind the scenes, but I'd like to get out on the track and score my points, and, uh, you know, the boys have rode very well so far. England have, have started well today in the heats, but not yourself. No, I, I didn't have one of my best meetings at all, and, I mean, it's, I won the last race, which was uh, quite crucial with Bruce and Dennis Segalas, who hadn't been beaten only once by Kenny. So it was a tough race to come back into, but I, I said to the team manager, I, I've got to go out and prove to myself that, you know, the conditions are not very good, as you can see. But, you know, they're the same for everybody, and you've got to make the best of them. But you, uh, uh, Picking up on that, 
Did it favour England more than America tonight, the conditions, do you think? Well, I think generally England were trapping a little better than, than Americans, but, uh, you know, the Americans don't give up very easily, and, they, you know, they were fighting all the way. i say for myself, I, I don't think I... Well, I did make one start, and I won that race, so... David, that's the first of five tests, but it's a, a tremendous start for you. Oh, yes. No, it, the boys are very confident now. We've, we've got the first blood as well. We've drawn the first blood. Not literally, but... Uh, you know, we're very happy to be have one, one, one match lead. Do you think the Americans will come back, though? They were disappointing. Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're not dead by any means. That, that, that is for sure. They're, you know, they'll have a get-together and they'll be back. Dave Jessup, England captain, thanks. Thank you very much. Dave Jessup talking there to uh, Gary Newborn. England clinching the match at the end of 18 heats then. The final score was England 63.